Okay, camera's rolling and let's do a quick video about how to fix the Sanwa OBSA LHSXF buttons, the lights and the buttons, which sometimes just go dim or completely blank out. So what we have here is a OBSA LSHXF switch on a 100 millimeter, I think, dome. The common arrangement for a lot of uh, things like rhythm games and whatnot. And um, also we have a harness, which I taped to a useless power brick I had. So the issue with those buttons over time is that when you have them in a in a machine, they go dim like this. So let me turn the lights down. So they are dim like this, and sometimes they're they're getting brighter, but then they're dim again and bright again, or just go out completely. Which um, some people say it's the harness, but. This time we can be sure it's not the harness because this harness I took I just took out of a box completely brand new genuine Sanwa just purchased it on Jaipo before this year so it is definitely genuine and completely new so the other suspect that people have more often than not is the light bulb itself which if you pop this open right here, you can see there's the the light is just like wedged into the... Uh, let me get this out. This requires some force. The light is just like wedged into those little connector plates. But even if you stick it all the way in, it's still wobbly. And in particular, if I wobble the light bulb Nothing happens, but if I wobble the wire, you can see it going in and out all the time. So what are we going to do today is we're going to go ahead and try and fix this. I'll unplug the power and let's start with taking apart the switch. What we're going to do, what we're going to need is a reasonably sized uh, plus driver for the screws here on the switch. I just uh, take out these two screws, one and two. And set them aside somewhere you don't lose them. Then what you have to do is there is a tiny kind of fragile, but you can do it. you can go around it clip that you just bend upwards like this. I'm not sure you can make it out on camera. Yeah, so you can bend it just upwards like this and the switch just pops into two halves. It's better to also take out the light bulb while we're at it because it might get in the way. And on the light bulb you can see the little dot here near it when it, where it says 12 volts. Um, the camera's not focusing. It is gonna focus. Not today. So you see the dot under the 12 volts, that means the positive side. And the opposite one is, of course, negative. So taking apart the switch, you also need to push in the lever that might be holding, the, holding back the actual casing so that you don't accidentally damage it or something. And now be careful because there might be in the once you get this out, the spring might cause this to fly out. Yeah, there we go. The switch is now open. We have the lever, which is the actual like optical interrupter, and a tiny spring here, which goes onto this shaft down here. This shaft down here, and when you when this whole thing is assembled, it just kind of rests in here. Um, no, okay, well, I'll show you around it when we're going to back to assembling it, but 
interesting here interrupts this optical uh, optical pair like a LED and a transistor when this thing wedges between those two it sent out a signal to the machine that you've pressed the button and it makes it much more much better than the conventional micro switch ones and you just slide out the lamp contacts like so so now if we look closely onto those connections here if we wobble those around a little bit oh it's very tiny on this one actually okay maybe this one is actually a damaged connector no it doesn't look like a damaged connector so if you wobble this ever so slightly it's gonna probably not come across well on camera you can wobble the connector and the pins on the other side are gonna wobble as well yeah that's not coming through that it, it's not in focusing anyway you get the idea it's the usual solderless joints all that kind of crap that just tends to crack over time and basically that's what causes the light to go out so let's reflow the connector reflow the bolt and contacts just for good measure and see if that helps us out so to reflow this you're gonna need some flux um, you could try doing this with rosin core solder without any flux by like, just touching this rose the solder to the joint but I'm not a fan of this thing so I'm using generic leaded solder from the 1960s and some cheap quick 291 which is a pretty decent multi-purpose no clean flux I'm gonna probably not clean it for the purpose of this video since I'm not using this switch anywhere but if you're doing it the clean way you're probably gonna need to wash it off with some IPA or something so what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply the flux onto the connect connector solder points just like that not too much not too little depends on the flux you're using then you take your soldering iron a moderate, moderately sized one like it doesn't have to be a real small one doesn't have to be a big one either and crap my chair just caught onto the soldering irons cable let me get back to you in a second yep there we go by the way recommend this it's a pine cell from I don't know which generation runs of type C it's thermally controlled very good thermal state thermal stability all that stuff very nice soldering iron overall and unlike the TS100 never killed any of my parts so far I'm just gonna take some solder and carefully go about reflowing those basically just putting some new solder onto those pins and if you do this at home don't be like me and get a damned fume hood or an, an exhaust fan or something nearby so does that look good to be honest I'm not sure but I don't think it looks good because yeah the solar is not getting the solder doesn't want to cover the whole pin okay now I did it so I'm just going to go ahead and do that with all six uh, all five of them sorry now the proper way would probably also be to clean off the old solder but I'm running out of solder wick and that's a bad thing because I just made a bridge so I'm gonna need to see if I at least have some left and if I'm not well there we, there we broke it okay I actually do have some solder wick and I need to get my pliers okay. 
Let's do it the clean way then. There's little solder we can have here, but should hopefully be enough to clean off all those pads. Let's start off by cleaning all those pads then. Basically taking off the connector and putting it back on. There we go. That came off clean. And some more on the other two. And some more on the last one. And just like that, I ran out of solder wick. But having successfully cleaned off the solder. Okay. Let me see if it's uh, got no solder on there now. If this will ever focus. Will this ever focus? This will never focus. God damn it. Okay, anyway. Um, so we removed the solder from this. Yeah, those webcams with autofocus aren't good. Yeah, you see, can, I can even take out the connector. Okay. So now we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we put it back in and start soldering it back on. Just put on more flux. And a gentle touch of solder to each of the pins so that it's covered and making contact with the pad. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, making sure there are no bridges here. And as you can see, those joints look pretty shiny and solid now. Let me get manual focus because this is annoying. Okay, manual focus. Whoops, and we got it. See? New solder joints, clean and shiny. Now let's repeat the same process with the light bulb connections because those are big and I see a huge crack in one of them actually. I'm not. I'm thinking this will come off, come off, or come over on camera. Come across well. So let me focus this. See it right there. Get something pointy. See it. Um. Right uh, there. This one, like a circle around the pin. That means it's cracked. Not good. But ROHS and all this echo stuff for you, making disposable electronics so you can actually throw them out at hurt the earth or something. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of a rant here with this ROHS stuff, but there's been too many devices I had to just basically open up and reflow just because they use this ROHS crap instead of the proper decent solder. Now those lamp contacts are also pretty nice heat sinks, so you're gonna oops the focus of course. Those contacts are pretty good heat sinks, so you're gonna need some very decent soldering iron for this. Okay, I forgot if I fluxed the other pins, so let me just do all, all four of them. While we're at it. Flux. This one can use some more solder because it's kind of looking kind of low on it. Yep, second one done. Third one. You have to heat it up until it melts and make sure it's like soaked in, the pin's like soaked in solder. And fourth one. I might have taken too much solder for this. No, no, there we go. Now those are also nice and shiny. 
and of course focus nice and shiny pins okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test if we broke it or not and we're gonna do this real quick by plugging it in with the key positive the one so this pin on the top was positive so the positive goes this way okay stick the bolt in it does take need does need some reasonable amount of force so the contacts on this bulb holder are pretty nice and let's see if it fixed it and as you can see i'm wobbling the wire all the way i want and it's not coming off any, it's not going off anymore it's pretty bright i can go blind looking at this so the thing we have to do next is um, crap the wire just fell off onto the ground anyway what we're gonna do now is clean the flux so I'll be right back okay I'm back and this is the worst toothbrush you've ever seen and I've also put some IPA onto the board so I'm just gonna turn this toothbrush on and scrape it off like remaining flux after we've reflowed everything just have a go with it, remove all the brown stuff. Now I'm not using the cleanest IPA here because once again I've said this is for demo. I don't use the switch in any place. I might actually use the switch now because I think one on my panel is going out sometimes. So anyway, nice and clean. If we focus on this. Nice and shiny, like from the factory. And I'm using leaded solder here, so it's not gonna even break apart after a while. Okay, the soldering iron can go. Turn it off, let it cool down, take precautions, all that stuff. All this can go, and we can take the remaining parts of the switch assembly and put them back together. Which means we need to take this casing and take this board like it was before and just stuff it like this. So now we have it. Um, yeah, there isn't much light here, is, he? is there? I could probably try and give it like this. Yeah, much better. So, connector to this opening side. Well, there's no real. There's really no other way to put it in. So. And now you take this uh, tiny bit, the stuff on the stick thingy. Take out the spring first, I think, and put, no, sorry, no, I was wrong. You put the spring on and you orient it this way, like the sticky bit, the sticking out bit to the um, optical thing on the board. You put it in here, like so. Um, I could use more light. Is it helping? Yeah, it is a bit help it's helping a bit. Okay. So you take this like that, and then you push the spring completely. Well, I might need something pointy here. So you push the spring in so that it's not in the way anymore. And that might take a few tries. If I had any fingernails, that would have been easier. that and put it in the yeah, like that fiddle it in and there you have it assembled here's how it works 
when you have the button released this this thing is not interrupted when you press it it's uh, going into this thingy there and when it goes into this thingy it completely blocks the light between these two walls of the sensor which tells the sensor you've pushed the button cannot get any simpler than that and now just put this cover back on which um, just should click into place if I'm not mistaken I did bend this out of shape didn't I? yeah I did bend this out of shape a little bit well who cares because we've got screws anyway it's not gonna come apart on its own one trick I do with plastic is after putting in the screw, turn a bit counterclockwise before you hear a click. And now start turning clockwise. That's why that's way you don't ruin the thread that was already in there from the factory. And it gives you some more lifetime out of your plastics. It's not much of a big deal here when you're not going to open it up really every so often but it's still a nice thing to do if you want longevity of your, out of your things because otherwise you wouldn't have been repairing this anyway so now putting this back together the dot on the 12 volt thingy and let me focus on this because I'm not sure it came across last time the dot under the 12 volt label goes to the positive side of the switch like this and now I need to get the damn wire that fell on the ground again I'll be in a moment okay I'm back with the wire and now we just plug this in and it's not going out anymore let me turn off the lights in the room I can wobble the cable all I want it's not doing anything it's not going out anymore so we fixed this successfully we can just now put this back into the button and the button is good as new so whatever your pop music developer whatever other control panels use this kind of switch I hope you learned something and I hope this saved your switches see you around